Dr. Mindy Pels. She is also just amazing. She's a best-selling author, speaker, nutrition, functional medicine expert. And she has spent over two decades helping thousands of people successfully reclaim their health. And she is a recognized leader in the alternative health field, a pioneer in the fasting movement, teaching the principles of a fasting lifestyle, diet variation, detox, hormones, all these great things. And you can find her on her popular YouTube channel, her Resetter podcast. She's the author of three best-selling books, The Menopause Reset, The Reset Factor, and The Reset Kitchen. Please welcome Mindy Pels. Fine and own that shit. If you have to, oh, sorry. I like to swear. I apologize. I probably shouldn't do that. Keep them up. Keep them up. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let me. For those of you that don't know me, um, uh, let me give you a little background. I really have been starting my speeches recently with helping you understand that what I am about to show you isn't something that I just dreamed up. I actually am standing here representing millions and millions of women. And, uh, you know, as Christina uh, mentioned, I have a YouTube channel that I started um, about seven years ago teaching fasting on. And I discovered the principle of autophagy. I was so fascinated that the body detoxes itself. I was like, wow, how did I not know this? Like, this whole cellular inner mechanism that detoxes itself, this is incredible. And I took it to YouTube to explain in the most simple form that I possibly could why detox, why autophagy was such an amazing uh, process to tap into using fasting. And uh, I did one video, had all these different benefits, and I had like 3,000 subscribers at the time, and this one video in about a month's time shot up to over 30,000, or made the channel sh shoot up to over 30,000 subscribers. Pretty quickly after that, people just poured onto my YouTube channel, um, to where we are today, we have a million and a half of people coming to my YouTube channel to learn about fasting every single month. So when I, what I'm about to tell you, I represent these women. And these women are feeling very unheard. And they are very frustrated that the medical system isn't listening to them, but I also want to tell you that the, they're frustrated that the, the nutritionists aren't listening to them, that the um, that the uh, fasting experts, the keto experts, all the people that are showing up and showing these one size fits all, they're done with that. They are tired of that. They want to be treated in a unique way and they want their hormones to be brought into consideration. So what I am going to walk you through are the principles of fasting and how they connect to hormones. And I'm going to show you some examples of what we're seeing in these millions of women. And when women learn to come in using fasting as a tool to help some of their hormones, and when women learn to step out of fasting to heal other hormones, that you can give me a 75-year-old woman who has hot flashes still and could never get rid of her menopausal weight. I can show you how to teach that principle, how she can lose weight. And I can also show you how a 25-year-old, let's, let's say 30-year-old, woman uh, can't get pregnant, I can show you the principles of moving in and out of fasting and how it can balance her hormones. And men, before you get ready to leave the room, I just want to tell you two things. I, had, I was in my clinic a couple weeks ago and one of my patients said to me, hey Dr. Minnie, like, I'm really excited for your new book, um, but I just want to know like, why is it a book on, for women? Why would you write a book on fasting for women? And I, I looked at him and I said, Ron, please take this with love. But there are a lot of great fasting books out there written by men with application to men. We have very few that are out there written for women. And you know, Cynthia to date has been the only book that's been out there with really good evidence of how of showing how women should fast. 
Fast Like a Girl is going to show how to time some of the longer fasts to a woman's cycle. So I'm not leaving you out of the equation. I'm actually bringing you into a conversation that a lot of women are having. And as I go down through these hormones, there's two things I want you to know. One, there are women in your life that are important to you. And when you understand her hormones, you are extending another level of compassion to her. Second thing, when you show her compassion through this hormonal lens, it only unites you and brings you together with the women in your life. Last thing I'll throw in there is you have a lot of the hormones I'm going to talk about, and I'll show you how I'll make little notes about how men need to look at this. Because even though as women we need to fast and go in and out of different length like, fasts, Men, you still need to vary your fasts, and, and we'll talk about that. So let's start off with this idea. Think about this a lot. Are women thriving with their health? And if you're not aware of these statistics, I want to bring them to your attention. Because women, the, our healthcare system, as many people have brought to our attention over the last day and a half, is really broken. I mean, the fact that we don't even bring diet up uh, when somebody's you know been given a serious diagnosis should be malpractice right there but the most underserved person in the healthcare system the most broken part of the healthcare system has to do with women's health women that we just we walk in like oh, i'm going to give you an example do you know that in a cycling woman in the front half of her cycle in as estrogen goes up cholesterol goes up at the same time Okay, I'm a 35-year-old woman. I walk into my doctor's office. They, oh, we're going to do your yearly blood test. All of a sudden, they, they, you, you get the result, and they say, your cholesterol's through the roof. Your cholesterol really went up. Did they ask you what part of your cycle you were in when they actually took that, that measurement? They're going to put you on a statin based off of information that might have been taken at the wrong time of the cycle? Did, it, did any of the doctors, those of you that are cycling, did they ever ask you, the, you know, how heavy your periods are, when they come, how long your ovulation cycle is, how long your menstrual cycle is? These are all huge determinants of your overall health. So when we look at these statistics, I can read them all for you, but you guys uh, are an intelligent group. When we look at these statistics, these are coming because women are, not, are, be are begin being given a one-size-fits-all protocol to their health. And as we can stand over here, we can, you know, uh, what Nina has shown with those food statistics, like, I, I like, sometimes I can't even hear that stuff. It makes me so mad. But we can stand over here, we can say this is wrong, and come over here and say keto and fasting is right. But if we don't help these women take this and make it right for our hormones, to me, we're still in this category over here. We're still making one size fits all. So when I look at these numbers, I look at an ignorant, at ignorance and at a culture that doesn't understand or pay attention to women's hormones. So that's a big part of my mission. So what I am seeing in these millions of women that pour on to my YouTube uh, channel every month is that fasting, I kid you not, is the door out for these women of poor metabolic health. It's the door out of chronic pain. It's the door out of Alzheimer's and dementia. It's the door out of cancer. It's the door out of chronic fatigue. It's the door out of sleeping problems. It's the door out of, of infertility. It is the door out. And what I love about this tool is that it's free and it doesn't take any time. Anybody can do it. So I can show the CEO in Silicon Valley, that woman, I can show her what I'm about to show you. And, I, and she can take those principles, knowing that she's working a 60 plus hour work week, and she can make ketones and become even more limitless. And I can show the woman, the single mom, who is working two jobs, can't afford the food that we're talking about, which is a big issue. I really, my heart goes out to like, when we look at oils, like Ben talked about, I want every human to have good oils. I want the food industry to, to all of a sudden discover that the poofas are bad and that we need to add in those good oils. But do you know that those good oils cost significantly more than those, the oils that are bad? So uh, it's too many people are living paycheck to paycheck. They can't do that. They can't afford that. They can afford fasting. 
They can take those oils and they can compress it in a, one small eating window, leaving a longer time for their body to recover. And what the science is showing is that when you take the food you're eating and you put it into a concrete period of time, leaving these longer periods for fasting, that you become metabolically immune from the Western diet. Right? <laughs> so men, let me tell you what I just did recently with a beautiful man that entered into my life. I'm part of a, a really cool uh, group where a bunch of mentors have come together to help some entrepreneurs. And there's a really heavy set entrepreneur. His name's Todd. He, he told me I can tell his story. He's about 300 pounds. And he came up to me and he said, I really need help knowing how to lose weight. And I looked at him knowing right off, like Dr. Trump talked about this, like I looked right at him and I'm like, this guy has a food addiction problem. I'm not gonna start taking food away from him. And so I asked him what his why was. Why, do you, why Todd, why do, you, why do you feel like you need to get well? And he said, I have two kids and a wife and I need to stay alive. And I was like, I will, when he said that I teared up, I said, I will do everything I possibly can to help you what do we need to do? So the first thing we did is I asked him just to push breakfast back an hour. I'm like, can you do that? And he said, yeah. I said, for the next month, all you're going to do is press push breakfast back an hour. Halfway through the month, he messages me. He says, I'm doing really well with that. Can I push breakfast back two hours now? I said, yeah, you do that. He's drinking eight sodas a day. He's eating, going to McDonald's daily. I, and I know i got to get at that. But so after a month, he gets on, we get on a call, he's lost 13 pounds eating McDonald's and drinking soda. But all he did is he took that and compressed it into an eating window. So then at second month, I said, okay, all I want you to do is we compress it into 15 hours of fasting, leaving, you know, that equates to, if I do it, nine hours of eating. And I just want you to compress it a little bit more and I just want you to add in protein. And every time you go to break your fast, you're just going to break it with protein. That has to be the first thing. Next month, nine more pounds. <laughs> we have not even taken McDonald's out of his life. I just saw him this week, and we've created another one for the third month. I have no doubt that the next strategy I created is going to give him another 10-pound loss. And what's going to happen is as he makes these changes, here's the thing. You don't need motivation to be able to fast and succeed at your health. You need momentum. When you have momentum, then all of a sudden the next step looks easier and the next step looks easier. So when I look at these rates, I know that all of that can be helped with one free tool. And everybody can do it, and it's called fasting. And my whole, you can go find me on my whole YouTube channel has been built off of this. My whole social media has been built off of this. Where, what Ben and D Dan didn't really tell you is what unites us is all three of us are, are going to work our fannies off to be able to end chronic disease. Because chronic disease should be an optional choice. And yet it's permeating everything from the pandemic to our health care costs to people dying earlier than they really need to be dying because they do not know what you guys have learned over the last day and a half. So I have seven hacks that every woman needs to follow if she's fasting. Now I will tell you the hardest thing to teach when you teach fasting to women is how do you give these hacks to make it an easy for the 25 year old to implement who has a cycle? How do you take that same concept and teach the 65 year old who's in, post, in her postmenopausal years? So I'm gonna do my best. So here's, what I, what, here's, the, here's the ground rules. And this is for the postmenopausal women. Don't get upset when I start to talk about the cycle. Okay, I'm coming back to you, don't worry. I gotta set the tone of what we need to know for the cycle, and then I'm gonna make it irrelevant to the postmenopausal. But every single time I, can, I look in the eyes of the postmenopausal women in the, in the room, and they're like, every speech I'm at, and they're like, I know, I get it, I get it, I don't have that cycle anymore, what do I do? <laughs> I am now 144 days in, not that I'm counting, into <laughs> my potentially postmenopausal <laughs> years, so I really feel you going 144 days without a cycle, I understand. So sit tight, but we gotta, de we gotta look at the cycle first. And here are the three hormones that drive women. So estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Here's what you need to know, men. You have one hormone that drives you. 
Now, it's not, you have the other hormones, I'm not saying that, but drives your behaviors, your motivation, the way that you operate in the world, you have one hormone, it's called testosterone, and you get it every 15 minutes. <laughs> right? <laughs> I will tell you, as a 52-year-old woman, I like love testosterone every 15 minutes. That would be incredible, right? Like, it would be amazing. Okay, so testosterone loves when you fast. In fact, the studies on men and testosterone shows that if you intermittent fast for 15 hours, you can raise your testosterone by 1,300%. If you fast for 20 hours, men, you can raise that up to 2,000%. So if you want some testosterone, stop eating. <laughs> that simple. Okay, women, we don't get that. We get testosterone one time. It's this little but we get testosterone one time out of the month, and it's right smack in the middle of ovulation. And if you go back and you think about why is that, why would the body, this is what I love about fasting, this is what I love about understanding the body, I will never tire of this human body. I literally on Friday night sit down and look at PubMed articles because I love it and it gives me a dopamine rush. And so I've been thinking, a lot about why would this, why would God make us only have testosterone one time a month? That's not fair. It's because during ovulation, we better have our libido up, we better have some motivation, and we better have some drive so we can procreate and make sure that our species continues. And if you think we don't control the, the reproduction system of our species, testosterone thinks differently because you all get it every 15 minutes and we get it once a month. And it comes in in the middle. So, I tell you this to say for women, it's estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone that are all three of those are driving us. Men, you have one. And when estrogen is really the hormone that gives us incredible mental clarity, makes us great verbal processors, we are really good multitaskers, Estrogen also helps with cognition, so we can hold on to information really well. It gives us great memory. We love it. it. gives us full hair and smooth skin and lubricates our joints. We love estrogen. We get a lot of it. And we're, yeah. If you don't, women, if you don't realize you love it, you should realize you love it. Testosterone, same as you, gives us motivation, drive, and libido. And progesterone chills us out. Progesterone relaxes us. And so here's the hard part about fasting is that estrogen loves when you go keto, estrogen loves when you fast, because estrogen wants glucose and insulin to be down. So this works great in the front half of the cycle. Day one, all the way to the big peak of estrogen, all the way to about day 15, your body is building and, and uh, producing, and then using estrogen, and these are phenomenal times for your keto diet. There, you can go low keto, you can you know, make carbs the enemy, you can do a three-day water fast, you can do any of that in this time period. Okay, that's because of estrogen. Postmenopausal women, I just want you to hold that thought that I just said, because I'm coming back to you in a moment. Progesterone is estrogen's twin sister. She looks the same, she's categorized under the same name, sex hormones, we act like she's the same, but they have vastly different personalities. Progesterone does not want you to fast. Progesterone actually does not want you to do keto. I don't know if we've had any conversations this weekend about when to not do keto, but if you want progesterone, you don't do keto. Because here's why, your body is so smart that in order to make progesterone, it, it makes you insulin resistant. Check this out. Dory and Gemma, you guys need, we need to look at this on, on Keto Mojo. I have been watching thousands of women's blood sugar over the last couple of years, and every woman will come to me that week before her period and go, I was doing, I was fasting, I was doing keto, I was rocking it, making ketones, my blood sugar was coming down, and now I can't do anything to get that blood sugar to come down. And then I say, what day of your cycle are you on? Well, I don't know, I'm like day 22. Exactly. Your intelligent body is raising glucose right now. 
so that you can make progesterone, so that progesterone can come in and create the uterine lining to shed so you can start your cycle again. This is really important to the postmenopausal woman who is anxious or can't relax in her body. Progesterone, we know, will actually go into the receptor site for GABA and calm women down. But when we go through perimenopause and, and menopause, we lose progesterone, we lose GABA, and we go crazy. <laughs> Literally, I, I, I'm one of them. So women, postmenopausal, perimenopausal women, you've got to step out of fasting every once in a while, step out of keto. I recommend, I think Pompa might have mentioned it, I, we recommend a 511 weekly variation for men and for postmenopausal women, which is five days a week of intermittent fasting with keto, one day you stretch your fast with keto, and one day no keto, no fasting. That way you are paying attention to both progesterone, estrogen, um, and testosterone. So first half of the cycle, super easy, keto and fasting. Then you can even, whenever these hormones go low, we can throw lots of fasting at it. We can go crazy with fasting. But as these hormones go high, now we have to start to bring our glucose back up. It's more important here than here, but I will tell you at ovulation what we're seeing in my community is that a lot of women, because the toxic loads are so high in our world right now, a lot of women are having to step out of ketosis even in ovulation because they're detoxing too much. So if you are a cycling woman, you're getting a little agitated in, uh, uh, in um, ovulation, you're feeling worse in ketosis, this would be my other recommendation is you've got to step out because your body's ketosis stimulates autophagy and those two when they happen together can create a bit of a detox reaction. A couple of thoughts on this. I want to just point out, I heard Laura Bryden, Dr. Laura Bryden, a hormone expert talk on this recently and she said that we are now actually in a time where women going through after 40 going into perimenopause, into menopause, we are in a evolutionary mismatch for what our experience of those depleting, declining hormones. We are living in a world that does not support the menopausal woman. And you're seeing this now. There's, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow just recently came out and said she needs a, a menopause coach. She's got all the resources, but she needs somebody to help her through that. We have nonprofits that are showing up that are now, I've got one that I'm partnering with right now that are going into corporations, trying to teach corporations how to help uh, menopausal women as we go after 40 through this experience. But we are living in the most toxic time in human history, and those toxins go up into the hypothalamus and pituitary, and they throw all of our hormones off. So what Dr. Pompa talked about these senescent cells. Our, think of your cells as sponges. They're just accumulating all the physical, emotional, and chemical stress that you're giving them. And if you stop and think about the totality of your life and how much stress you've been thrown at you, you may want a do-over. Those cells may not be who you want living in your body anymore. And fasting is your do-over because you can get rid of those cells. You can say, thank you, appreciate you serving me, time for you to go. And now my lifestyle, my great lifestyle can actually backfill in and can start to create new healthy cells. And it's free and it, it it, 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 doesn't cost, it doesn't cost any money, it doesn't take any time. I've literally never seen a tool that can accomplish this. I, 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 I'm like, we're gonna change health with this free tool. So, a couple of things that women need to remind themselves of. I learned this from uh, Dr. Anna Kabeca, um, that cortisol really is the bully on the hormone playground. If uh, what we know is that if you wanna make a change to estrogen, and progesterone and testosterone. Temple talked about this too with PCOS, that we've got to get ourselves insulin sensitive. You can put thyroid here, you can put any hormone here, but if you are on HRT, if you're on bioidenticals, if you wanna change this, you gotta make yourself insulin sensitive. And those of you that don't feel like you're getting yourself into deep enough ketosis, or you feel like you're not really in, like able to lose weight as quickly as you would like, you gotta ask yourself what your cortisol levels are. Because I can give you the, the per, a person that's done keto and fasting perfect and put, show you that person in a stressful environment and they won't drop a pound. Because cortisol makes us insulin resistant. Yet the hormone of the day, 
the hero of the day is oxytocin. Uh, Dr. Anna spoke of that. So literally, if we want to overturn insulin resistance, we just all need to connect and hug each other a lot more, and then we could affect all of these hormones. Uh, I'm not, I'm joking, not joking. Uh, so oxytocin hacks, I won't go through all of these because I know that Dr. Anna went through them a lot. But I, what I tell all the women over 40 especially, but all the women in our, in our community, that let's, let's start prioritizing touch. Let's, let's prioritize connection. You, we can think we don't have time for this, but I'm gonna tell you, your hormones will tell you you don't, you don't not have time for this. You've got to create a connection with people to balance all your hormones out. Okay, principle number three, I'm gonna zoom through these. Women over 40, you've got to lean into the longer fasts. Here's what happens over 40. You lose estrogen. She's never coming back, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. She's never coming back. So it's going down, down, down. When estrogen goes down, you become more insulin resistant, which is why the diet that you do at 45 is not gonna work as well for you as the diet you did at 35. Because you are, your estrogen is declining, you're now more insulin resistant, which is why you've gotta learn fasting. And I would encourage you to get into some of these 36, 48, 72 hour fasts. Those are amazing for unsticking weight. We also know that when you lose estrogen, you lose collagen. And collagen is what keeps our skin not looking too wrinkled and our hair like looking shiny and beautiful and it keeps us injury free. So, but we lose, as we lose estrogen, we lose collagen. So we need to really do our best job to keep our bodies producing the best estrogen, uh, appropriate, age appropriate estrogen. When you look at chronic pain in our world right now, it, we, we have a crisis of that and most of our chronic pain issues are happening to women. That's another topic that's not talked about. So there are eight, six different fasts that I advocate for. Uh, they are in my new book, Fast Like a Girl. Um, they all do different things. I look at them like switches. So I'm going to go through this very quickly uh, because this is everybody's favorite party trick. Uh, if you invite me over for dinner, this is like how I get asked, like, tell us again, how does it work when you fast? So this is like what I get every time. Okay, ready? Here we go. 13 to 15 hours, your blood sugar's down low enough that now you've gone over into fat burning mode. You're making ketones, your CRP inflammation's going down and your body is starting to upregulate two hormones, growth hormone, which slows aging, testosterone, which I already talked about. 17 hours, you hit the switch for autophagy. The body says, well, gosh, I haven't had food in a really long time. I, must, I should probably make myself stronger. And it turns within, and it cleans up the cells. And the cells that are not good, these senescent cells, it gets rid of them. 24 hours, your gut starts to produce intestinal stem cells that repair the whole inner lining. You've been on birth control for two decades, multiple rounds of antibiotics, eating bags of glyphosate because you eat out all the time. 24 hour fast is your fast. 36 hours, what happens is your body starts to go, geesh, the blood sugar's been down for a while. Okay, I really have to go find that stubborn fat that I stored years ago and it is, I call it the fat burner reset. It is that magic fasting hour that will unstick weight. 48 hours, your intelligent body will start to create new dopamine, literally new dopamine receptor sites, and reboot your whole, whole dopamine system because you've gone two full days without food, so it wants to reboot that. And then at 72 hours, it reboots your whole immune system. And that all happens for free. <laughs> I just want to point that out. <laughs> Okay, last couple of things. I'm gonna go through this really quick because I'm always the one that goes over time. Okay, fourth thing is we gotta keep your detox pathways open. Um, if you're struggling with fasting, here are some of my favorite ways that you can open these pathways up. A lot of people have like different ways they go about it, but I, what I hear from a lot of women is, oh, I tried fasting, I gained weight. It didn't work for me. Fasting works for everybody. Sleep, it's just like sleep. It, you wouldn't say sleep doesn't work for me, but you would say I can't sleep. You, exercise works for everybody, but not everybody can do the same exercise. So if you're struggling with fasting, my number one uh, 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 thought for you is make sure you're opening up your, your lymph pathways. It'll make life a lot easier. A couple ways we've done it is castor oil is one of our favorite things that we put in. Um, we also really work on keeping, you want to have the bowel movements when you're fasting, so we're getting rid of those senescent cells. 
Um, and sometimes binders are really helpful. So you can come in with some good binders to bind up those toxins, but when you fast, you need to have a bowel movement. Last couple of thoughts. Number five is minerals and aminos. I've fasted enough people to tell you that if you go into a fasted state and you're already depleted in minerals and aminos, then you're gonna see some serious side effects. Because of the way our soils are and the lack of nutrients in our soils, most of us are not eating food that's rich in aminos. Well, aminos come from animal protein, um, but at least in minerals. So we are recommending that women especially, but men can do it too, that you are adding in mineral packets, amino packets into your fasting window to get those nutrients in. What we're seeing in women, and this one's something I'm working on right now, is we're seeing that there's certain part of a woman's cycle where all her nutrients go down, this red. Look at all the aminos, all the lipid changes, all the, the sex hormones, everything starts to deplete right as she comes out of ovulation. And a large reason for that, if you think about it, is because the body needs all those nutrients to be able to make progesterone so it can shed the uterine lining. Because the li shedding the uterine lining is like a detox. So we're looking at adding in these aminos and these minerals at that time so that you can move into that last half of your cycle with ease and grace and the right chemical balance. Okay, there's me drinking my minerals. Uh, I mean, last two things, don't fear a fasted snack. If you are new to fasting, the research is showing that if you do some kind of fat bomb, uh, Ben talked about the coffee is a great example of a beautiful fat bomb. Uh, Dave Asprey, I've talked to him multiple times about this. He's, a, of course, a big believer in coffee, but MCT oil and even uh, whipping it up with some fiber, prebiotic fibers, can help you in ketosis and will help you also be able to fast a little longer. We are seeing this with the people I've been working with. A lot of times the bridge between a 15-hour fast and a 17-hour fast is a, you know, some, a, a, a scoop of nut butter in their fasting window or a, a, a cup of bone broth in the fasting window as just sort of a crutch to get you over these longer fasts. And the research, the evidence is impressive. Um, when you decide to eat, I want to tell you to eat. Fasting is not calorie deficiency. It is not cutting restriction of calories. I cannot say this enough. When it's time restriction, pick your time. I showed you the times. And then what I want you to do is when you eat, eat. Stop counting calories. Ca calorie restriction is horrible for so many hormones, the thyroid hormone being one of the biggest. So when you open up that eating window, go for it. In my new book, I have two versions of food that I feel like women should tap into. One is called hormone feasting and one is called ketobiotic, a bit of a version like, like Anna's keto green. I just love to emphasize how we should be eating more sauerkraut. So last, this is my last slide and I'm out of time. Um, I put, if you're intrigued by everything that I just said, I put it in a book. Uh, 83,000 words, and um, it's, you know, it's available for pre-order. It comes out December 27th. Uh, it, I'm going to go do the audio book in two weeks. I'll think of you because that is not my favorite thing to do. Um, but it's an incredible book. I, the first part of it is everything I just taught you is the science of fasting. I go into exactly why these fasts work. If that part is great for both men and women. But then the middle part is how women should take fast and change, vary it more, how to time food to it. And then the last part is a 30-day fasting reset um, that I created for women. So this, to me, is the way we need to start approaching keto and fasting for women. And I would, I'd be honored if you pre-order pre it. It's really been a, a passion project. So with that, I hope that helps.